Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and from the Frederick Health Hospital. Today, we're going to be talking about a difficult case of inferior STEMI with a refractory no reflow uh, in which we had to reach for the guard wire device and angiojet. The uh, patient is a 70-year-old man uh, with uh, high blood pressure, dyslipidemia, and a prior cabbage. He has a lima to the LED, a rima to the OM, and an SVG to the PDA. He presented to the ER with several hours of worsening chest pain after his regular evening workout at the local gym. Uh, the ECG showed inferior ST elevations and the STEMI team was activated. On cath, he had severe uh, LED and circumflex disease, but both the lima to the LED and the rima to the OM were widely patent. The native RCA was occluded and the culprit uh, shown here uh, is the 100% occlusion of the vein graft to the PDA. And um, here is his RCA, uh, which is occluded in its midsection. Um, there are no right-to-right -right, uh, collaterals uh, that are in, of any significance. And the uh, left-to-right collaterals uh, injected from the uh, lima and the rima uh, were also minimal. So uh, we decided to go after the SVG. Uh, we uh, engaged uh, with a six French MPA guide and advanced a workhorse wire uh, to the position uh, shown. The uh, BMW wire actually had some difficulty uh, going beyond this point. Uh, we could not see most of the SVG, but presumably uh, there was a lot of thrombus, uh, so we went ahead and performed aspiration thrombectomy uh, using an export catheter. After a single pass of the export, uh, flow was somewhat improved. Uh, contrast is now a little further along, uh, but we're still not, uh, not able to see uh, the distal end of the vein graft. So we did a little bit more aspiration thrombectomy, and this time a little further downstream in the graft. And uh, we made a little bit more progress uh, with contrast now penetrating uh, even more into the SVG. Uh, but we still could not appreciate the whole SVG, and the wire uh, could not be advanced any further. So we did some more. Uh, we did more aspiration. Uh, this time we use a Pronto V4 catheter, uh, which has the aspiration port on the side of the catheter rather than at, at the tip. Uh, we thought that the uh, change in orientation of the aspiration port to the side might allow more, or at least a uh, different uh, clot extraction. But uh, after this third round of aspiration, flow was actually worse. Uh, some of the thrombus might have embolized downstream. Um, so we went ahead and fused uh, intracoronary vasodilators. Uh, we did nicardipine, adenosine, and uh, sodium nitroprusside. Um, for no reflow, I find that sodium nitroprusside or nipride, uh, usually in 50 to 100 mic uh, increments, actually work quite well. Now, IC epinephrine has also been described. Uh, IC nitroglycerin, uh, which is often used, is actually uh, usually not particularly effective uh, for no reflow. But in our case, uh, unfortunately, these drugs had no effect on the flow. And, and sometimes the drugs might not even be making it past the occlusion, which may be the case here and would need to be infused uh, via a microcatheter. So what the heck do we do next? Uh, we um, decided to uh, gently uh, balloon the lesion. Uh, we couldn't use an embolic protection device like a filter wire or like a spider here since we couldn't even see uh, the end of the uh, vein graph. So we uh, gently dilated the lesion uh, with a 1.5 millimeter and then a, a 2.0 by 30 millimeter balloon, which is what you see here. Uh, we used small balloons at very low pressures and long inflations. Uh, since we had no embolic protection device, uh, the idea is to try to gently open up a channel uh, without embolizing uh, too much of the thrombus. But there was still no flow. What do we do now? Uh, was our wire even past the lesion? Maybe that's the problem. So at this point, unfortunately, the patient uh, started to, to uh, become bradycardic, and we saw that uh, he was in complete heart block. Um, we inserted a, a temporary pacemaker. Uh, we really needed to see the rest of the vein graph. So we uh, passed a new thrombectomy catheter as far, as far down as we could and inject a contrast uh, via the thrombectomy catheter, which is what you see here, to see uh, whether we could pacify the rest of the graft. But still, even with injection uh, in the thrombectomy catheter, uh, the vein graph uh, would not fill. So uh, we decided to rewire uh, with a more hydrophilic wire. Uh, with a lot of difficulty, uh, we were eventually able to maneuver a, a Pilot 50 wire 
down the vein graph and into what appears to be a, a right posterolateral branch. Um, contrast injection via a new thrombectomy catheter now finally shows the rest of the SVG as well as the distal RCA territory. We can now see a very large clot in the SVG where the white arrow is uh, that uh, seems to be causing the problem. All right, so, so this is good news. Uh, we can see the problem now. Uh, we're finally getting somewhere. We just have to somehow aspirate or, or dilate that clot. Um, we, we tried again to pass a, a filter wire across the thrombus, uh, but again, uh, we're unsuccessful. We again position a uh, Pronto V4 uh, right adjacent to the clot and made um, several uh, aspiration passes. But um, there was still no flow. Um, what do we do now? Do we uh, just use a larger balloon? Do we just stent it and hope for the best? Do we reach for the androjet? Uh, we did not have the penumbra system or the uh, solitaire uh, stent clot retriever uh, at this institution. And then how are we going to do any of this uh, without showering all of the thrombus downstream and completely plugging up everything in the distal RCA territory? Uh, we still could not get an embolic protection device wire uh, to cross the occlusion. So we uh, decided to reach for the guard wire. The um, guard wire is a uh, nifty little device. Uh, it is a 0.014 wire that actually has a large soft balloon that is incorporated within the wire itself. So you cross the lesion with the guard wire and then inflate its balloon that's uh, at the end of the vein graph to occlude it. This then blocks any thrombus and debris from going past the vein graph into the distal vessel. You then balloon and stent the lesion as quickly as you can over the guard wire. You have to do this quickly because obviously you're occluding the vessel. And then afterwards, you pass a thrombectomy catheter to aspirate all the debris and deflate the guard wire balloon. So here you see uh, the guard wire uh, in place uh, with its uh, balloon inflated at the end of the vein graph. Um, it's a um, nice, useful device, but as far as I know, the uh, guard wire unfortunately is no longer available in the US, uh, at least for uh, coronary interventions. So with the uh, guard wire balloon in place, uh, we uh, uh, went ahead and dilated the mid to distal portion of the uh, graft with a 4.0 millimeter balloon. We then aspirated the debris with the provided export catheter. Um, so uh, our hopes were high at this point. Uh, we're hopefully making some progress. We uh, deflated the guard wire balloon and gave a little IC adenosine and nipride for good measure, but there was still no flow. What now? Um, so we decided that we would try Androjet uh, to break up the thrombus and get it out. Androjet works on the principle of a rheolytic thrombectomy. The device infuses uh, saline jets at high speeds, which travel backwards into the catheter, uh, creating a powerful vacuum suction effect that then fragments the thrombus and allows evacuation from the blood vessel. I always insert a temporary pacemaker before Androjet uh, due to the possibility of significant bradycardia uh, during the procedure. The Androjet catheter is also quite bulky and can be difficult to maneuver. The clinical data really is only marginal uh, with an early trial, Amy, that actually showed possible harm. Uh, the later JetStand trial was more positive uh, with benefit uh, for ST segment resolution, but there was no significant benefit for scar, uh, scar size reduction. So Androjet uh, is not used very often, uh, but when you need it, uh, you need it. So here uh, we have the uh, guard wire balloon back up and the Androjet Spiroflex catheter advance over the guard wire wire. Uh, we did multiple runs uh, with the Androjet. Uh, we already had the uh, temporary pacemaker in place. But after Androjet, there was still no flow. We did another run of the Androjet along with infusions of intracoronary nipride um, distal to the thrombus using a microcatheter, but there was still no flow. So at this point, we decided to just stent the vein graft. Uh, we deployed a 5.0 by 28 millimeter ultra bare metal stent into the vein graft. Uh, the SVG was quite large and we did not have the larger diameter DES at the time. And in SVGs, at least, there is evidence showing that uh, bare metal stents actually perform just as well as drug loading stents. But even after the large stent was placed, uh, there was still no flow. Uh, we infused more adenosine, more nicardipine, more nipride, uh, but there was no effect. 
uh, we could not get this vein graph open. We then actually attempted to see whether we could wire the native RCA. Uh, we tried a pilot 50 and then a pilot 200, uh, but neither wire could make it across the occlusion. At this point, we were four hours into the case. Uh, we started at 1.32 a.m. and it was now 5.27 a.m. Uh, the birds are chirping, the morning crew is starting to uh, come in. Uh, we had used 280 cc of contrast and uh, nearly 56 minutes of fluoroscopy time. The patient was 100% paced, but otherwise he was fine. Uh, he was hemodynamically stable, he had no chest pain. We were tired, we decided to stop. Uh, the uh, patient was admitted to the ICU on a tyrofibin infusion. He did relatively well, actually, uh, even without revascularization. Uh, he never needed a permanent pacemaker. Uh, his complete heart block resolved, and he reverted to normal sinus rhythm later that day. His echo showed EF of 40 to 45% with uh, inferior akinesis. His troponin peaked at 95 nanograms per mil. Uh, he had mild contrast nephropathy, but that improved a few days later, and uh, he did go home on hospital day four. All right, take-home messages. Sometimes you have to know when to stop. This can sometimes be very difficult. Uh, interventional cardiologists have big egos, and we don't like to admit that there are some things that we are simply not able to do. Refractory no reflow can be very difficult to treat. Uh, I like uh, intracoronary sodium nitroprusside, and I find that it generally works quite well. Uh, other agents include adenosine, nicotipine, and epinephrine. Remember that nitroglycerin is actually not particularly effective uh, for no reflow. And finally, as this case illustrates, uh, patients uh, with inferior MI can often do quite well, even without revascularization, uh, uh, provided they get the proper uh, medical management. Thank you for watching.